Games based on bands or musicians have always been hit or miss, whether it was the arcade classic Journey or the first person shooter based on Kiss's Psycho Circus. Even ones based on pop idols like NSYNC or Britney Spears have usually missed the mark, even with their core audience. But there is a brand new one for mobile devices called Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast, a turn-based RPG based on the Iron Maiden mascot, Eddie. But does this game have enough for Iron Maiden fans, or is it just another poor excuse for a licensed mobile tie-in? In Legacy of the Beast, you're controlling Eddie, the Iron Maiden mascot that, of course, will be well known to fans of the band, and even those who may not really know much about Iron Maiden will probably recognize this very recognizable skeleton character. In the game, you can actually gain different forms for Eddie, such as Samurai or Vampire Hunter, and these different abilities you can switch at any time using Eddie in order to change up the battle and give yourself an advantage. To join you in the fight, there will be other creatures. You can get Owl Wolf Cultist members. You can access an Allied Soldiers in a World War II battlefield, and plenty of interesting mythical creatures from the Egyptian world. However, some of the designs end up falling flat and are just bland at best, such as possessed dice or hourglasses, or even possessed guns. After completing a battle, you will earn experience, money, and other gems that you can then use to build up your characters and get a more powerful army. You'll use soul gems in order to summon from the Book of Spells various creatures to join to the mix. You may get duplicates, and you can actually sell off the duplicates and unwanted creatures for a bit of extra gold. You can also level up each one of your characters and level up their skills as well using the various other stones that you find throughout the course of your gameplay. Legacy of the Beast is a free-to-play game, so that means of course there's going to be microtransactions throughout the game. But you don't buy gold or actually buy back time that you can then use to enter battles. You actually use it to buy Iron Knight, which works as the game's main form of currency, even though it is heavily based on gold. In order to do the more advanced stuff, you're going to end up needing the Iron Knight in the end, because Iron Knight can get you more gold, Iron Knight can get you more time in order to enter the battlefields. And to get it, you will of course earn some throughout the course of gameplay, but you're in a very small amount. It won't be long before you end up running out of Iron Knight, and the game's gonna want you to penny up with real-world money in order to buy some more. There are thankfully some small bundles for a couple of dollars or even five dollars, but there are those hefty bundles that you have to be careful that you don't accidentally buy that cost $49.99 and $99.99 in order to get the most Iron Knight for the buck, but honestly, I'm surprised if anyone ends up spending that kind of money on a game like this. In the battles themselves, it is turn-based and you'll tap the attack icon. Every character has a default attack. Some can attack a single character, some can attack all the characters currently on screen. It didn't take long for me to get a really powerful character that I ended up using throughout the course of my entire playthrough. What's really cool is as the characters level up, they can hit a max level depending upon what star rating the character is. Once you build that character up, you can actually evolve it, going back to level 1, but now it's a rarer character with already advanced stats, so you can start the process all over again, max it out, and then evolve it again in order to keep it in the battle and be able to take out the more powerful foes later down the line. Characters all have unique abilities as well at their disposal, whether it be building up shields or bigger, larger attacks or doing status effects, lowering health, lowering attack and defense, or raising attack and defense for your main characters. The enemies that you're going to be fighting also have these things that they can use at any given time. Some of the most annoying, of course, being stuns, which will, of course, stun you and you'll lose a turn. Or later on, it got extremely annoying when characters were able to get free turns on a consistent basis and be able to pummel me with five or six attacks in a row before I was finally able to get control again of my characters. One of the things I do love about the battles is the game gives you the option to speed them up at a times two or times three. Yes, everything moves a lot quicker and you'll have to be a lot faster with your button presses. If you have not so great of a phone, it may lag and cause you not to really be able to play on the higher speeds, but for those who have the ability to, playing the battles on a higher speed made them not drag nearly as much as I have had other turn-based RPGs like this drag in the past. Besides leveling up the characters, you do level up your profile, and by doing so, you will earn more amount of time for you to enter more battles. The farther you're making into the game and entering a battle, it will cost you more and more time in order to enter these fights. And once you run out, you'll have to either wait for it to manually build back up, or of course you can spend the Iron Knight in order to get yourself some more time to enter more battles. Basically, the time is the point system so that you can actually enter into any kind of battle. 
Thankfully, the story elements of the game, which are told with some stagnant cutscenes, do not cost you anything to enter them, and in fact, by watching them, you end up getting one extra Iron Knight, which is very small, of course, but at least you get a little bonus for looking at the game's story. Besides the points to enter battle and money, as well as the Iron Knight, you also have to manage the amount of points you have. As you level up, you'll be able to have more total points for your battle team. Every character costs a certain number of these points, and the bigger they get, the bigger levels, and the rarer the characters are, the more points they will end up costing you. So you may not be able to use the most powerful characters all at one time, especially early on. So even if you spend that money in order to get the rarer spawns, you may not actually be able to use them in the battles until you level up a little bit. One other small thing they add into the mix later on as you make it farther into the game is the time swap option, allowing you to go from present to the past, and this will actually change up Eddie's abilities as well as some of the abilities of the enemies that you end up fighting, so you can turn the tide of battle by changing the current time scheme, though for the most part I like to keep it in the default time period for whatever land I'm currently battling through because I ended up having better attacks, but of course to each their own and some of the abilities you'll get in different time periods may help you better than it ended up helping me. Once I started to get going with Legacy of the Beast, I was definitely having more fun with this than games of the similar genre. The ability to speed things up was definitely a huge plus, and I did enjoy some of the character and creature designs. The gimmick of being Iron Maiden is a novelty at best. There is some music and stuff that is thrown in, and there's plenty of Iron Maiden song and lyric references all throughout, whether the game's loading up and giving you various different lyrics that basically appear at the bottom as what the game's currently doing, and I definitely saw run to the hills referenced at least six or seven times within the first hour or so of me playing the game. One of the things that I didn't appreciate about the game at all though was Legacy, the developer or publisher for the game, ends up asking for access to your contacts and photos at startup. If you allow them to do so, they won't bombard you with the message, but if you say deny, they will ask you every time you start up the game, which I think is just skeevy at best and something I didn't appreciate. I think the novelty of playing as Eddie from Iron Maiden is cool, but I think even for Iron Maiden fans, that novelty is going to wear out pretty quickly, especially the references to songs. It's like, haha, we get it, Run to the Hills, it's an Iron Maiden song. You don't need to reference it consistently throughout the course of the game. For a tap RPG turn-based game like this, it's pretty fun and one of the better ones I've played recently, but it's still marred with some of the same problems of microtransactions, but I was able to play for longer periods when it came to Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast than I have with some other games recently like TMNT Legends that felt like only a few minutes in that I was running out of various things that I needed and it was asking me to buy rarer and more expensive items. It is free to play, so you really don't have too much to lose when it comes to playing Legacy of the Beast, and in the end, I'm going to be giving the game a 3 out of 5. It is pretty fun, I'm definitely going to go back into it and explore more of the worlds. There are currently four worlds to explore, with a fifth one being added soon. No word if they're going to be adding bonus or extra areas, and every world has a normal and hard mode for you to conquer. But anyway guys, that will wrap up this Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course... I hope you enjoyed.